Just a couple bad weather fans representing New York Talking all things sports, man what could go wrong? We got Alex who's a fan of the Knicks And Mike of the Nets The yin yang of the tri-state place your bets On the Yankees, Giants, Mets or Jets Yeah you should listen if this sparking your interest If you made a vow to your team don't break it Bad weather fans is the relation Relation, relation That's right, this is Bad Weather Fans, episode number 163. Mike Paseglia, Alex Benezowitz, and just a brutal loss for the Nets. Uh, one that I'll remember forever. That stung. It sucked. 116, 114. Nets found every way possible to blow it from turnovers to bad coaching, um, all of it and everything in between. It was just an awful, heart wrenching loss. Uh, Knicks fall to the Orlando Magic. In Orlando, that's three straight losses for the Knicks as they are a team that is up and down right now. Closing it out in the third quarter, making it close, then go to the fourth and Orlando extends the lead and holds on versus the Knicks. Um, One is a net fan. I I think right now I'm not even in the like, there's a lot of rage modes. I think you could go as a net fan. I'm just right now in in a state of disbelief on that loss. And having a hard time just kind of finding my words to talk about it. Okay. Well, hello. I'm here too. And how, how are, are you? you? And how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. Yeah. No, it's, it, I get, I get the mind wandering there, man. That was a tough loss if you're a Nets fan. And Knicks, Knicks had a tough loss too. It was a weird emotional roller coaster. You know, the Knicks got punched in the mouth early. You thought they were going to lose by 40 points. And they just, you know, Randall sucked. RJ sucked. Ben Carroll, who's a star, was was abusing Randall, guarding him. And, like, it literally thought, looked like he had his playbook. Every time he turned, he was standing there waiting for him. And, you know, they ended up losing at the end. They came back, and they, you thought they might have a little shot. But you never thought they were going to actually win. And then I turned it over to the Nets game. <laughs> and I watched the end of the fourth quarter. And uh, at least, you know, the Knicks salvaged a little something by with that game winner. A little bit of different reaction for both of us for that game. And... You know, when Donovan Mitchell missed that free throw and then he got two offensive rebounds on on his own free throw and missed them both. And then Okoro yeah. hits the three and, and see you later. So, well, the mistake by the mistake by Jacques Vaughn was not putting in Dayron Sharp there for the rebound okay. at the very least. You know, it's you get the makes rebound, sense. you call a timeout. If he makes it, you call a timeout. Uh, there was no need to have Joe Harris in that spot. And that was a brutal mistake from Jacques Vaughn. That was a, that was a it was a critical mistake. You, you can't. In that situation, you put Clax, you put Dayron, who's played well. I mean, but every Aaron big Sharp, man you have on the line, yeah, yeah everybody. Aaron Sharp's actually, <laughs> in the last couple of games has has looked really good. Uh, which is there's no silver linings from this, but that was at least a positive you could take from it. Uh, but yeah, and that's it was brutal. Uh, just as Harris bad. was hot though down the stretch, he was Harris hitting some threes. Well. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I just don't care. I just I, yeah. I don't know how to like emote good positivity when you're up seven, up eight with a minute and a half left, and you lose, and you do it in every way possible with turnovers you know right 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 not right passing not it, it just turnover 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 um you know donovan mitchell was okay he was good he wasn't great he wasn't how he was the night before and the clutch jumper though there yeah, at the end yeah mm-hmm. jared allen killed him in the paint uh mobley was good Cavs are a very good basketball team you know they're the four seed they're almost 20 games over 500 um and you can see why their team that's been playing with each other all year They've got some flaws. They have no perimeter shooting. Uh, that will be their biggest flaw in the playoffs. And uh, but they're a good team. And 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 the Nets are, the Nets are going to be in the play-in. I mean, it's just that simple. Uh, the Nets are going to be in the play-in. And you know, the Knicks right now are fighting for their five seed lives. And and that's that's what it comes down to. And and it's the Knicks and the Heat for the five six. Um, and you know, the Knicks will beat the Rockets. Miami's going to beat the Nets. And then you're going to have a really big game that, in a lot of ways, Alex. I think we'll determine who's going to have the five seed in that Knicks. <laughs> if it's Knicks or the Heat, it'll probably be that game. That'll yeah, it's a tiebreaker. Difference. It's for the tiebreaker, yeah. It's a, huge, uh, it's a huge game for both teams. Yeah, I mean, the Knicks get the tiebreaker if they win, and then uh, it's 2-2 if they lose. So I don't know if it goes to, like, division record or conference record conference. after that. I believe it's conference. Because I know the Knicks have the tiebreaker over the Nets because of their division record, which is bizarre. So it's it's just it, it, divisions mean nothing these days. So maybe they want to make the division mean something. So they make it for the tiebreaker. 
which is weird. So they just need to get rid of the divisions altogether at this point. But that's another conversation. But either way, I'm I'm just happy. You know, the Knicks are you know are cruising right now. Like with in this like staying pat. What I mean, they're not winning. They're losing, but they're still winning. So like we're we're still there. Yeah, in the, the out of the play. And no, no, yeah. I'll be I'll be real with you, and I'll probably have a little edge because I'm angry. But that's all right. The Miami Heat are coming. Like oh like, yeah, I know are. I know you're. Oh, I yeah, know it are. was nice to see the Nets lose, and that felt good. But mm-hmm. in the scheme of the Knicks going for the five seed, that's irrelevant. Okay. Well, Brunson's hurt too. That doesn't help either. <laughs> you, got Brun- yeah. you got your best player hurt. The Miami yeah. Heaters. You, you saw the Miami Heat beat you the other night. Of course. That game's going to be monumental. That, that game's big. You know, and I haven't the seen Heat that win. We did our last yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. Episode 162. You know, I, the Nets have lost five straight games from that point. Um, the Knicks have lost five. three. <laughs> yeah, it's Thank just like. God. Yeah, a lot's changed since last week. A lot of <laughs> you, know, you know, you were talking about the Nets having a better record than the Knicks, and we were, re- you know, it, it was yeah. it was kind of funny. And now, no, and, and the Nets have had the opportunity. The Knicks have lost three straight games. They haven't played great basketball at, you know, at all. the very least, at least for me watching the Knicks. You know, because I mean, my season now is, you know, the Nets are going to be in the the Nets will be the seven seed. I don't think they'll drop to the eight. Their schedule will definitely gets a lot easier. Um, they're going to play the Hawks in that seven eight series. They win, they're the seven seed. They're gonna see the Celtics or the Sixers. If they lose, Bucks. If they lose, out of the playoffs, and then they're in the lottery. So, I mean, that's the reality for the Nets. It's one of those three scenarios. I personally don't want to see them jump in the lottery. I know a lot of people. Well, let me say this. I know for the growth long term. Okay, I want to see playoff games. I don't care. Uh, you can come with me with every analytic about the importance of having the twelfth pick compared to the fifteenth, and show me the difference. Whatever. I want to have more playoff games to watch and enjoy. Now. Obviously, if the Nets were to win the lottery, I'm not going to disagree with that. They're not going to win the lottery with the 12th pick. But the chances are super duper 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 slim. So my point is, that's what I want personally. If you think it's better for the growth of the team long term, sure. I care about my fucking health and how I want to see the team do. So that's what I care about. And then the other thing will be just, you know, how the Knicks do in this playoffs. Um, You know, is it? I would say this. As a Knicks fan, Alex, let's say the Knicks Knicks are going to play three teams in the playoffs. It's either going to be the Cavs, the Celtics or the Sixers, who would you want? Who would I want? Obviously the Cavs. Those but are the, so those are the three. I mean, that's the three. It's going to be. obviously the Cavs, but the Knicks are going to. In my opinion, the Knicks are going to lose to either all three. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, they might give the Cavs a better series. They might steal one from the Celtics. They might steal you know a game or two from the Sixers because you know they're weird in the playoffs. Something always happens with them. You know, and in that first round matchup, a lot of times, you know, bad teams take teams, good teams to six or seven when you don't even expect it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just going to be another year for the Knicks like that. But whatever. And if the Nets fans who are talking about tanking, the Nets can't tank right now. If, in order for them to tank, they would have to sit everybody and play the G League. You can't. They're going to try to win was, some games. The G League almost won. <laughs> yeah, they're the best G League team in the, <laughs> the Bucks. <laughs> That's true. That That's true. So you can't even tank with the G League team. So just you, you have to just hope they win. It's not a video game. You can't like, you know, simulate it and have everybody sit on the bench and, you know, start your worst players. You can't do that right now. You 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 have to try to win. It it's not going to make a difference like you said from the 15th to the 12th pick. You're not going to drop low enough. I mean, I, I'll tell you what, though, man, if you get in that playing tournament and if the Magic somehow sneak into it, I know they're like three games out of it or something like that. The Magic, the Magic are, are, are coming, man, next year. They are they play what they play hard. Marco Fultz is is looks like, uh, you know, he's he's over his issues and he's healthy. And, and you know, Anthony is good. And Ben Carroll, like I said, man, before he is a star, that he's dude, he looks so much. Yeah, he looks so much better than he did earlier in the season. It's a, he's huh. he's he's coming, man. Well, two two parts. I don't right, think first pick were, in the draft, obviously. But you know, I don't I mean. think the Magic are going to make the play, and they're just too far back. And it's yeah. Just not well, I mean, it's not likely, back. but if they do, they're dangerous but for I, sure. I, I let me put, put it this way: if I had to pick, if I had to say which team do you want of the three that has the best chance to win a title in five years between the Nets, Knicks, and the Magic, it's the Magic. Mm-hmm. Just that, you know, I know it might be hard for Nick fans to hear. But that. we'll see what happens. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's had, I, Ben Carroll's that, that, that good. Yeah, rather have that young core <laughs> than anything the Knicks or Nets have. For sure, have a, for sure. You know, you, you have a young team that's growing, and unlike the Rockets or the other teams in the West, this team has actually shown growth, played better basketball, winning games, and the Orlando Magic are definitely a team you can't take lightly. Nets have them Sunday on the back to back. After playing the Heat on Saturday, that's certainly going to be a very difficult game for the Nets, who need to show some sort of rebound and energy to go into Miami and win is going to be, you know, extremely difficult to 
do. Um, yeah, Orlando Magic are a good, young, feisty basketball team that are on the rise, and they're a team in the East that has done it with a lot of bad teams that have enabled them to draft a lot of rookies, a lot of young players, and now they have a chance, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And, 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 you know, if I were doing an Orlando Magic pod, podcast, I'd be in a good fucking mood. Well, but one I'm more not. point I on mean, the th- <laughs> fuck. I mean, glad they beat the Knicks. At least, they, I mean, I mean, think you know, I would say this. Like, I don't think the Nick fan... The Nick fan has definitely taken a beating over the last couple of weeks from, you know, the Knicks people, are back. Yeah. People like saying, you know, from, you know, from on air personalities saying, They'll do they're damage. Going to Eastern Conference yeah. Finals. Yeah. You're referencing Tommy Lou Gower of WFAN. It's saying a joke. Do damage. Like, joke. Like that, he, he, know, like people like that know deep down inside what the Knicks are. I'm playing a character. Yeah. Be, that's exci- all that. be excited yeah. that they're playing well, of course. Exactly. I mean, it's been a long time, but at the same you saw time, me. I wasn't playing that. I'm like, yo, listen, right. we are, which, yeah, like, which chill. Is fun, which is which is funny <laughs> yeah. because Richard Jefferson said this on his podcast with Channing Fry. You know, he was called a hater, which I totally disagree about. I don't think Richard Jefferson's a hater at all. I think he hates the Knicks. I don't think he's a hater. I think there's a very big difference. Like I would say, right. I hate the Knicks. But I don't think I think he hater. can be a hater, but in this instance, you're about to say he's not being one. So good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think it's almost, you know, and, the, and this is what bothers people about Nick fans is they have this self-loathing attitude, like, oh, us, the we've been so bad. Then they win a couple games in a row, and it turns into look at this. There's nothing like the garden, there's nothing like basketball in New York, and it's going like, Oh my god, pick a side already. Are you a fucking miserable idiot? Or are you a fucking winner? Like, pick one already. It's so fucking annoying. Pick a side. You're going to be a dick Celtic fan that thinks you win all the time? Or are you going to go on the other fucking side of things and be a loser? Like, And you have both of them, and it's mind-numbingly annoying. Well, think about this. A new uh, coach in the in the neighborhood, uh, Rick Patino of St. John's Basketball, tweeted out today, nothing like watching college basketball at the Mecca. Madison Square Garden. Can you imagine getting to play all of your home games there? So even he thinks it's the mechanism. Well, I mean, the, I mean the, well, let me ask you, nobody's decided to go to St. John's in 30 years. So the answer to that is no. <laughs> but I know what he's doing. He's of course. He's, he's, he's you know, but, that's but a great, answer, great hire. Great hire. No. Yes. The answer yeah. to that question, no. Rick, is no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. The answer to that question is no. Uh, it's the I mecca, bro. Think... It's the mecca. It's the mecca. Right, no, right, I'm right. kidding. But it, honestly, and going back to the Knicks, Julius Randle, he, his stats look great on paper. And this is the problem with him. He looks great. If you just looked at the stat sheet and you didn't watch the game, 21 points, I think he had nine rebounds plus 20 or so. But if you watch the game, he played like absolute shit. He was out of control. He had that like terrible technical foul before the half. Like he was flinging it down the court to try to get a last second buzzer beater from some to RJ Barrett or something. And he got hit on the body and it was a foul. And the ref probably knows he missed the call. He let Randall talk and let Randall talk. And let Randall talk, and to the point that he was walking away from Randall, and Randall kept talking, quickly trying to hold him back, and the ref's like, all right, I really got to tech- give you a technical yeah. right now. He's like, all right, bro, come on, man. And gave him a technical foul. And then quickly he's trying to hold him back, like, dude, you don't want to get tossed out of this game, and he starts barking at quickly like he's going to fight him. It's just, this guy is so emotionally broken, he's a loser, he's a stat patter, the Knicks are never going to win anything with him, I don't care if he has two all-star appearances in the last three years, I don't care if his stats look good on paper, this is who this guy is. Just because they went on some nine-game winning streak late in the season, just because he gets some good numbers, does not mean the Knicks are going anywhere with him. So now that his value has been raised, you need to trade Julius Randle this offseason if the Knicks want to have a future and try to maybe, dare I say, win a freaking championship and not just get some first-round playoff like berths yeah. and lose. Well, they're never so trading. tired, man. They're never trading. I know. Trading. And that's they the problem. Him. They run like a mafia. They they're a mafia. Him. He's they in the family. Him. He's and a he made said, man. I mean... I, it's also so bizarre because the guy had a 57 point game and it was and they terrible. lost and they lost it's just it's just there's something different with Julius man there's just something and there's a he's not three straight games of the technical foul well, you see what happens three. when Jalen Brunson's out right and then it, the, the, but Brunson played the last him. two games and, and he had RJ, technicals and, and, yeah. and I'll just be, RJ Barrett is so fucking inconsistent he played games terrible good, time and there's terrible games where he's awful you know yeah. like I would I would ask this question I, I, I this wasn't an original idea by me but who would you rather have if you had to do a 2019 redraft? RJ Barrett or Nick Claxton? Uh, Nick Claxton, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. 
Yeah, of course. I mean, you'd be a homer if you said no at this point because Nick Claxton's on the way up and RJ Barrett looks like he's hit a ceiling and he's 22 years old and you don't know. But like, if I had to bet, you would pick Claxton. But at the same time, yeah. I'm not giving up on RJ Barrett yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I still, he's still averaging 20 points a game or so. And, and he's, he's only 22. He can get better, but it's tonight. He was absolutely awful. I tweeted this out today and an central also during the game on Twitter. He said, uh, I, he said, Alex said me, who was, who was, who tweeted that if, if, if this was the first time I saw RJ Barrett play tonight, I would think he was an absolute scrub. He was that bad tonight. Yeah. Pulling it off his legs, the missing shots, air balls, terrible passes, throwing it out of bounds. He was terrible. Like and he's not that bad. Minute. What? Until the last the minute. The, sorry to interrupt. Oh, Nets like in the, the last, last minute. minute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. What's up with what the weird night? You know, just, you know, I'm just going to talk a little next. It makes me feel better about myself because <laughs> that loss was bad. And I alert to Net fans. This is tough. <laughs> nice, uh, nice. I'm not editing that. Nice. that. I'm not going to edit mute. that. I'm in such a bad. I'm in such an annoying mood. I didn't mute it. There, you're gonna have to listen to a cough. Um, <laughs> me too. There you go. This is for Net fans. I cannot believe that Mitchell Robinson went on Twitter and declared himself the best center in New York. I cannot believe that 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 he was, was excited. Said. He just beat Claxton's ass that night, well, and he was excited. Well, he didn't he did. beat his ass. That game, he, didn't he outplayed him. Ass. He outplayed if him. If you want to say he outplayed him, but to have the balls to say that, cool. Then to go back and delete it, fine. But then to keep going on social media and best basically begging to be traded, right? Like every time right. he's basically he just got paid from the yeah. like from <laughs> from liking a comment about if you went to Dallas or San Antonio or Mars, you'd get the ball more. And to whatever he had to delete the other night about like basically a glorified on Snapchat, jo- jo- yeah. you know, getting a big workout in. I mean, he's basically saying, get me the fuck out of here. And for as good as Nick culture has been this year, not enough attention has been put. And I'll say, blame the local media has been put on how Mitch Robinson has been absolutely ridiculous in the things he says. And a- an absolute horrid teammate to be out there caring more about himself than his team. And that, to me, would be a big problem in crunch time when you get to games where you're going to play the Cavs in Cleveland, where you're going to maybe play the Sixers in Philly. Like, there's no trust in him, and he is another young player that has completely gone off the rails with this bullshit. I, hey, I, I can't I can't argue with I'm, I'm a huge Mitchell Robinson fan. Huge. He has so much talent. I think he has the ability to be one of the best centers in the NBA. Literally. Can be a defensive player of the year uh, candidate every season if he was motivated and healthy. Can be an all defensive player every year if he wanted to be if he was if he was motivated and healthy. But something is always getting in the way. I don't know what it is. It's immaturity. Maybe Tibbs really gets into him and he really can't stand it because maybe there's some favoritism there. What well, clearly there is with Julius Randle and maybe Mitchell Robbins is the kind of guy like, bro, fuck off, man. Randle just threw the ball at the and then got three technical fouls in the last three games and you're coming at me. You know what I mean? Like for for something that Randall just did. You know, some people take that stuff personally. Like you've all been in school as as kids. The teacher sometimes favors a, a kid or and over here, and then you do something. You're like, well, you just did, didn't didn't yell at Billy for doing that the other day. You know, it's it's the same shit. And and that's the problem. And that's why you're not winning anything with this coach either. But hey, listen, we're gonna be the we might be the Knicks might be the fifth or sixth seed, so nobody cares, and everybody like. Rushes that shit under the rug, and we're going to put in the playoffs two out of three years. This is all what I said in the offseason before this season, Mike. The Knicks are going to spin it as we've been in the playoffs two of the last three years. Look how great our coach is. Everybody's trying to say Tibbs is going to be coach of the year. Get the fuck out of here. You no, know, let's go to Mike Brown. <laughs> Mike, Mike Brown's Brown. the coach of the yeah. year. Yeah, obviously, yeah. The Mike Kings Brown. are incredible. He's the coach of the year. Kings are a fucking title contender all of a sudden. You know what I mean? It's crazy. How much joy did you get just seeing the Nets lose? Was it? Oh, my God. It made my lot. night because tonight I, I was really pissed at, at this it game. It saved it. <laughs> it really did. I was like, oh, they thank God. <laughs> Especially when Mitchell missed that free throw. I'm like, fuck. But I then. Mean, yeah, I, I mean, it was an yeah. absolute shit show on how they blew that game. I don't know how Mitchell sure. missed both those. I know how we missed that first layup that was the missed shot, like uh, the rebound. But the yeah. second one, I feel like he did really, it was like, how am I by myself? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so Neil and Claxton yeah. fighting for the ball. It tips out. And I just knew. I just, you just knew. At that moment, you knew. Oh, you shit. Knew. You knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah. You knew it was coming. Somebody was, was open. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> what a bizarre season. I mean, what a bizarre fucking season. And Okoro can't Down shoot, there. and he hits the three, of course. Of you course know. He did. Oh, man. It's just. Oh, that, that really did save it, but you know what? Uh, I don't know. Aaron maybe Rodgers maybe the Packers. Maybe will yeah. build from this. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I mean, they're, they're a joke. <laughs> Oh man, what a I weird year, man! Damn, what a so fucking cool. weird year in the NBA in New York. So frustrating. Just <laughs> such a. I just mm, tough, tough to watch. But you know what? They can win the next three games, and you'll be right back on top of things. Of and like, we're we're good yeah, to go. I, I just they're gonna be in the play in. I just get ready for it. back to well, back. The heat, yeah, the, the heat are coming, man. The heat are coming. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the net in Miami to go in there. I mean. Um, I think you'll learn a lot about like to me, I can't at this moment see the Nets going into Miami and winning mm-hmm. after having that kind of emotional loss. It's the NBA. Anybody can beat anybody. Of course. But to go into Miami and have that type after that kind of emotional loss, um almost feels impossible. Almost feels impossible. And I mean <laughs> you know, I think of Miami. Oh, uh, I'm that's just laughing one thing at your sorrow. I, Sorry. I, I, yeah. I mean, whatever. If you want to get joy <laughs> of that, I get that. I'm, I'm going to get joy when the Knicks lose. I'm not ashamed <laughs> to say it. I don't want to talk about the Richard Jefferson thing because it no. bothered me a little. Yeah. How yeah. is he a hater? He's a hater overall because he shits on the Knicks all the time, every chance he gets. So he's a hater. And then when the Knicks do well, he used to act like they weren't, you know, doing well. Now, lately, ever since this past offseason, I feel like he's been fair. When he was on this show on Bad Weather Fans, when he good. said, yeah, he said the Knicks should trade R.J. Barrett for Donovan Mitchell. Guess what? He was probably right. Probably you know what I mean? was right. Yeah, exactly. And and he said also that, you know, he admitted, he's like, wow, the Knicks, during the season, he said the Knicks on, on ESPN, not on Bad Weather Fans again. He said, you know, the Knicks stuck to their guns, stuck to their plan, and they look like they're a good team. And then he praised the Knicks for getting Josh Hart. He's like, they're a good team. And then on the Yes Network during the last Cavs game, he said, you know what the Knicks? You know, like we can we we're ha- can we can we just say like thank God the Knicks didn't get him. It's that's a compliment. A compliment. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a compliment that the Knicks are good, but it's also saying the Knicks fucked up by not getting him, which he's but right. Would, but that doesn't make him a hater. That makes <laughs> no, him, it doesn't. That makes, it doesn't. That's, that's it not doesn't. A hater comment. No, no. A hater I, is it, like no. discrediting wins, like Max right. Kellerman used to do or Stephen A. Smith used to do. Right. He hates yeah. the Knicks, but he mm-hmm. wasn't a hater, and I yeah. think it's really difficult for Nick fans. To have somebody of success and credit and credibility say things about them that they disagree with. And I think they naturally say hater because they don't know how else to handle it. Right. But to me, it's okay. Like, why is it why is it bad if he says, you know what? I played mo- a lot of my career with the New Jersey Nets. I don't like the Knicks. Like, why is that such a big deal? I mean, if, if well, yeah, like, he said it the first the first time he was on with us uh, on Bad Weather Fans, episode two or whatever the fuck it was. He he said to us that he you know he used to love going into the garden as a New Jersey net, beating the Knicks ass, and then going out in the clubs and and hanging out with their girls. Like he said that, You're right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So like that the, the hate runs deep with him, and I understand it, and I kind of respect it. I don't like him sometimes when he's on TV. I've gotten to know him, so I like him as a person. He's a good guy, but sure. at the same time. You know what I mean? Like you got to call a spade a spade when he was talking to that fan in the tunnel or whatever that was, that video that went viral, you know, when he's like, he was right. You guys hate your own play. You, you guys hate your own players more than we do. Like, what are you talking about? He's right. Yes. <laughs> but also I don't blame Knicks fans because look at what the shit that we've had. So oh, of, oh, course cool. of, yeah. course. <laughs> of course we do. Of course. Of course. But it is this, this whole idea that, Oh my, Oh my God. You know, Richard Jefferson doesn't like us. Like not everybody is going to, you know, praise you. Yeah. Sorry, not everybody likes you, you know. It's true. No, it's, it's true. true, you know. And and for him to go in there as you know, I embody how he feels because that was something I went with when I was growing up, and that's how I saw things. That's right. how I view it. I view it the same exact way. And I've I like to me, I've always what have I said on this podcast? I said the Knicks are a really good basketball team. They got a chance to win a first round matchup. If you know, I don't. Am I a hater because I don't think they could beat the Bucks? Does that make me a hater? I tell, no. you know, I say that I want the Knicks to lose every basketball game, but at the same time, I can also understand when they're having a good season. This bothers me to no end, and it's the core of this podcast, and it really irritates me because if I had a fucking Dallas Cowboys fan and a Giants fan on here coming on the podcast, and it, I, you know, we'll talk to a Nick fan that's a Giant fan, and I said, "Well, do you want the Cowboys to lose? Of course, I hate them, but you could also be rational. Do I want the Eagles to lose? Of course." We could also be rational and say Jalen Jalen Hurts the fucking MVP. Jalen Hurts is incredible. Right, both can be right. true at the same time. 
All right. irritate it, it really it really irritates me. You enjoy the World Baseball Classic? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it does uh, what a joke of a fucking argument that's been, man. People are so it's mad funny. about the WBC. It, it's so ridiculous. People ridiculous. are so mad that people like the WBC, and then people who like the WBC are so mad that people don't like the WBC and get offended, and both are offended. And I'm just sitting there like, I don't care about the WBC. I'm a Mets fan, upset that Edward Diaz got hurt, but I don't give a fuck. You also, you also if you like it, you like it. Who cares, man? <laughs> to blame know? the WBC on his injury is insane. I mean, me. he wouldn't have gotten hurt doing that in spring training, but he still could have gotten hurt like Brandon Nimmo did. It's the of same course. shit, it's, it's man. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's like NFL preseason. They're playing baseball. That's You're <laughs> playing baseball. Shit happens. You yeah. Know, to me, if I personally am not a fan of the WBC, it didn't interest me, but I can't get upset at somebody because they like it and then shit on them and say, you're an idiot because you liked it. To me, that is <laughs> ignorant and that is stupid. I throw my headphones down and make like, it like I'm so mad. Like, I give, I, give me a know, break, I, bro. You know, if your favorite TV show had a lot, like you can't belittle people if there's something they like that you don't understand. That to right. me is just ignorant and a lack of. Uh, honestly, it makes you stupid. <laughs> it does. And Stupidity. the funniest thing is that there's there's no Olympic sport. There's no Olymp baseball Olympic sport. So this is all these guys have from Japan, from from you know uh, Venezuela, from the Dominican Republic, from Mexico, from Puerto Rico. They, they don't have their own Olympic Games. I know Puerto Rico is part of the United States, technically, whatever. Shut up. But at the same time, this is all they got. So if they get a chance to wear Venezuela on their chest and and play with their own Venezuelan people and try to win a sporting competition that's fucking awesome for them and i understand it's not it's like if the nba did a wbc for the nba and they had the olympics nobody would care about it because we'll just wait for the fucking olympics man what are you doing you know <laughs> no, just, this is a people... unique and, and and clearly the ratings for the wc wbc has grown every year of it's course continuing to do better and better so it, mm -hmm. it's it's growing legs you know you can you can disagree that you can you can say you don't like it. And when I say I like it doesn't interest me. OK, that's fine. It's just not for me. Yeah. But I can't argue against it. It's grown in popularity and people are interested. And I love the idea. And I like seeing that there's people that do enjoy it. Like to me, that gives me great satisfaction. What, what do I care? Like you're there's, happy. There's eight bajillion fucking things to watch on TV. I could watch the Nets lose. I could I could watch every show you've ever thought of on Netflix or Hulu. Like, it's not like I have a, oh, man, I don't like the WBC. I'm going to have to go read a book tonight. Ridiculous. It's you funny know, to me. Look, it's, it just, it Why really are they so mad? Yeah. my mind about Both it. sides, yeah. though. Why do you care if people hate it? And why do you care? Why do you care that people like it? Like, both sides are stupid. <laughs> just I don't, I don't, enjoy I don't it or don't hate it. Like, just or ignore it. Like, what the right. fuck's well, your problem? It's the, same, it's the same thing with, it's the same thing with the NBA and, like, the NHL. You know, when people yeah. are like, uh, or people that are like, oh, the NBA is not as good as it used to be. It's just not what it was in well, the it's 80s not, or 90s. But nothing's as good as it used what to I, be. What am I supposed yeah. to, so should I not? Should I not watch it? Should I not like it? The game's evolved. Should I just not care? Should I go, oh, you know what? You're right. I'm not going to watch the game. I'm not going to watch the Nets take 34 threes. It's a different basketball game. I, uh, yeah, you're right. It's not the same thing that it was, but it's evolved and changed. And I can't, you know, I can't watch it anymore. It's not for you. <laughs> Don't get mad that I like it. It's right. Like, oh, it's, it's not the same. But then why are a bajillion people? Then why does it have more success now than it did when you were watching it? What's right. the change? Maybe right. the game's not how you liked it, but it's clearly doing well. So maybe you're in the minority here. Exactly. To me, the WBC is kind of like gay marriage. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this all together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like y people who hate people, like don't want people to who are gay to get married. It doesn't affect you in of any course. fucking way. Right. Let the let the let these people who want to marry their loves yeah. of their lives, if, if they're the same sex, they're gender yeah. neutral, whatever they are, let them fucking get married. Who the fuck cares? How does that affect your life in any way? <laughs> you know, you're right. It's to say it's that's why I said. Well, that's why I came back to when I started when I said ignorant. It's just yeah, people that it's people are don't, li don't see things in their view and mm -hmm. it bothers them. Yeah. And it bothers them that they that somebody sees things in a different light. And that's why I go back to what I originally said. If that's your argument, I just think you're stupid. Yeah, I agree. I Sorry, agree. I just think I just think you're stupid. If you can't put yourself in somebody else's shoes and to use your example, understand that love is love and people care about each other. 
if you can't understand that and put yourself in that position and just say, okay, maybe I'm not that, but that doesn't mean that you can't. It's the same thing. It's just a lack of it's a lack of intelligence. It's a stupid thing that the lack said. of empathy. And it, and, it, and it just <laughs> it just shows that your brain isn't developed with common sense <laughs> in 2023. And if you have brain that opinion, fuck off. And it really bothers me. It really I, it, I agree. No end. It, it it really gets on my nerves. And I, yeah. you know, it gets on my nerves. Does, and we're the it, same it, in it that. Does. It's really funny because we're both like. Don't like the WBC. Both Mets fans upset. Edwin Diaz got hurt, but, but I still just, don't give a fuck if you uh, like the WBC. I don't care. Go and like it. Yeah, <laughs> right. like, I don't like. I didn't watch it. I Me either. I watch a second of it. But I'm not upset if you did. <laughs> hey, it's not the World Series. Oh they care more about not the like WBC than the what? World Series. I'm not calling my you know my phone. Oh my god, did you hear what happened? That person likes the WBC. What a loser. <laughs> Who cares? We're about, your, we're, we're about your own situation, your own. Yeah, problem. no, it's so stupid, and and <laughs> oh man, it's it's just it's automatic. I, I forgot where I was going, but it's so fucking dumb. Just getting so mad for no reason is just it's just it's beyond dumb. You know, the other funny part about say. it too is when people are like, "Well, it doesn't matter," and then it's like, "Well, then I then, then let me ask you this: If it doesn't matter, why is it all that was being discussed on talk shows across New York right. and America? It doesn't matter, but that was the only topic." Yeah, and March Madness. Yeah, because we can't talk about March Madness. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, I, I love people that are like, it's not a topic, but I'm going to use it as a topic. I'm going to talk about how it's not important. Like I said before, if it's not important, you don't bring it up. You can't have a conversation about how something doesn't matter and then make it the conversation. The guess, yes. Stupid. Right, and people people need to grow up, okay? People need to grow up. Players don't care about their teams as much as fans do. And that's for every sport. They players care about their money. They win or lose, they're getting paid regardless. They don't. They get, might get a little bonus if they win a World Series, but they get or NBA championship or Super Bowl. But they're it's nothing compared to their contracts. And they care more about their money, especially in baseball. When you come from these from poverty, like not poverty in America, like poverty in in these countries in these smaller countries like i'm not talking about japan i'm talking about like well, you know venezuela yeah. mexico like these guys come from nothing and they're coming to major league baseball they lie about their age they do all types of shit just to get out and make millions do you think they give a fuck if they win in the world series of course they care when the, when they're in the moment they're with their team they're trying to win of course it helps them make more money by winning but at the end of the day if they get a chance to wear like Venezuela on their chest or, you know, whatever country they're from, that's going to mean more to them because that's where they're from and that's who they are. And that's the people that know them for real. And if you don't understand that, you're a fucking moron. Like and you even, said, it's like, even if you don't, there's all levels of degrees of how much you care, or don't care from a right. person, from a player in that moment. But if you can't understand and respect how someone could be into it, I, I have a, I have a real problem with that. You, you have to understand that people like that, you know, and you, you're you're right. You know, you've been a Nick fan for 30 years. I've been a Net fan for 30 years. Uh, you know, there's no 30 year Nick player. There's no 30 year Net player. Maybe you know, if you're the Heat, Udonis Haslam. That's the guy that's been there for. Wade Wade years. was there for a long time. Yeah, even he left and went to the Cavs. But the point <laughs> you, is, know, like, you know, you're yeah. with your team forever. Um, and the Bulls. Yeah. So you stay with them. You stay with them, and. Uh, it's, it's always yeah. about the jersey first, and of course, the guys that are going to win you a title, you'll remember forever, and will right. be immortalized, like the legend Willis Reed. Um, you know, R.I.P. to Willis who passed away this yes. week. That's a Nick, of course, will be immortalized for what he did for you as a fan and for your organization. Um, and you'll remember that forever, but you'll mm -hmm. always remember the Nick fan. You know, the Nick jersey for me, the net jersey first. That's what I'll think about. You know, that's what I care about. I've got a son who's two and a half and he's starting to look at the TV and he sees the Nets. He goes, dad, dad, dad. Like to me, it's like passing that. that that's what it's about. Of course. That's what, that's what to me, it's like, okay, let's get into it. You know, that's what it's about. Um, yeah. And, and all those memories. And this makes no sense to what we were talking about before. But no, but uh, listen, just, it, it's kind of like a last thing to, to put a bow on it. I remember when Robinson Cano went to the Mariners, where he was like this big Yankee player, and then you know he went to the Mariners. He was a superstar before he got busted for steroids and stuff. And I remember talking to my friend who was a Yankees fan. He's like, I don't know, you know, the Yankees offered him less money. The Seattle offered him the ten years or whatever, some crazy contract. 
He's like, I don't know why he wouldn't take less. Doesn't he want his monument out in, in Monument Park? I'm like, do you think he gives a fuck about a monument? He's from somewhere where I forgot where I'm is from. He's from nothing, and he wants he wants money. <laughs> like that's what he wants. You know what? Are you well, kidding? Even yeah. Same to be said with Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer. Right. Oh yeah, I just wanted to be Mets. No, no, you didn't. They got, they got owner, <laughs> especially Scherzer, forty three million dollars. <laughs> Okay, you know, like, I guess we're moving hey, to New York. Hey, yes. Mike you want to play in the Nets for two million or play in the Knicks for 43? I'll be a Nick <laughs> a couple of years and take the money and then say later. But I mean, realistically, it's the same yeah. thing. Verlander, yeah. Scherzer. I think these guys are like, oh, we wanted to come to play at City Field. and be No, you know, it, ultimately, those things make a difference and change. Right. And, you know, the, it is what it is. I mean, play. Americans care more about American accomplishments like the World Series, Super Bowl championship, sure. NBA championship. Of course. You know, it, it's just is what it is. Remember Yao Ming bringing back to basketball. Yao Ming, he remember he like had a hurt foot and, and the Rockets didn't want him to play in the Olympics, but it was in China. And he was like, I'm, I'm playing in the Olympics. I got to do it. I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. oh, sorry, Houston. You know, China wants me to play. I'm I'm the face of China. And this is the Olympics is for me right can now. I, can I give some <laughs> birthday shout outs real quick? Sure. Uh, I want to shout out happy birthday to Jason Kidd and Kyrie Irving. Happy birthday <laughs> to the Dallas uh, Mavericks there. Oh, how about that protest, man? The protest in that game oh, with the Warriors and Jason Kidd. Bizarre. Kid. So Sorry, if you didn't see this, the Warriors out of nowhere just inbound the ball, and all five Warriors are under the hoop, and the, they just inbound it, and they get a dunk when no one's Confusing. there. And the, the Mavericks were like, the, I thought we had the ball, and they were all standing on the other side of the court. But then it's like, you're like, oh, yeah, they have a point. They didn't tell the Mavericks that they switched the call in, during, the, during the timeout or whatever. But at the same time, if it was the Mavericks' ball, why weren't the Mavericks by the ball? <laughs> you know what I mean? The, guy, the reps standing over there. What were they doing over there? It was bizarre. You know I, I just didn't understand. That was the weirdest thing ever. So they're going to lose that protest, of course. But it's, it's the weirdest thing ever. No, and they, these teams never win these protests. And, you know, as a Nick fan for you, yeah. you have Dallas's pick. And of I know course. you're not thinking Porzingis about it, trade. they drop in the yeah. lottery. That's your pick. Yeah. They got to stay <laughs> out of the top 10. The top the, It's top 10 protected, I think. So, you know, they're not going to get into the top 10. You know, just get out of the just losing the plan or even getting the plan, losing the first round, giving me a mid first. That's that's great. I, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, they might miss the playoffs. And that's what I was saying when they traded for Kyrie Irving. I, and I tweeted it. I said it on this podcast. Why is everybody assuming that Kyrie Irving is going to now lead the Mavericks on this great run? He has torpedoed so many franchises now. At this point, you have to stop giving him the benefit of the doubt. Here's the uh, two parts on his or, or one part on him. He he's been a good. He's, he hasn't done anything outside of basketball, but he's been hurt a lot. He's missed a lot hurt. of games, and Luka's been hurt too. Yes. And when you take those guys out, Dallas is depleted of depth. They don't have Dinwiddie. They don't have Dorian Finney-Smith. Jalen Brunson's gone from last year. So all that depth that mm -hmm. the Mavs add, like you think of the Mavs, you have Luka Doncic. Let's add Dinwiddie, Smith, and Brunson. The Mavs fucked up. Okay. Yeah. But... They don't have those guys. They're losing basketball games. You know, Kyrie's a free agent. What will they do? The other thing is the Suns are dropping. Well, yeah, no, that's the Suns yeah. pick. The Suns are 38 and 34. They're, I mean, they're two and a half from being out of the playoffs. That's insane. If the Suns miss the West the playoffs, is so close. Yeah. I'll say this, Listen, Alex, yeah. regardless of what happens in the net season, if the Suns, if the Suns went into the lottery and that unprotected pick became a lottery pick, that would at least that would be if you could say like it's still gonna be like twelve, but at least you have a good pick. You know, yeah. What I, mean? I mean you're just like, okay, we got three more. And the other part of the Nets thing with that Dallas trade is the Nets have what I think is the twenty twenty eight unprotected first round. There's no chance in hell Kyrie Irving's there. And there's a Luca might be gone. Luca's yeah. gone. <laughs> that could end up being a decent trade for the Nets on the back end. Of what happens there, and I know it's in a million years, and well, Luca could still be there. Four hundred twelve of this, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it's in five. I mean, we'll see. I, I just, you yeah. Know, I, I got people. We could be dead by then. Yeah, who knows? What God. the hell? God forbid. Yes, of course. God forbid. I mean, hopefully, the USA will have a World Baseball Classic championship <laughs> for people to talk about. <laughs> Fucking assholes. Do they get a ring or do they get a trophy or a medal? Know. I don't know what they get. Is it the Mets? You looking forward to the season? I am. Here in I am. Mode though. I'm in Nick mode, but I, the Mets are coming in a week or two, right? Two weeks. 
I, the yeah. Diaz thing hurt me. I hope they. I wish they. I hope they pick up a closer. But I'm glad they're not trading for one now. Oh. Steve Cohen said they'll be like going out of a position of weakness right now. Everybody knows they need a closer, so they got out of Vino. They got Robertson. They can hold serve. Plenty of teams have won World Series championships without a closer. It just helps well, to have that dominant closer. It it puts fear into the that, batters and that, the lineups and stuff. That's like another that. thing that drives me. Yeah. People that are saying if you lose Edwin Diaz, the net, the Mets have no chance. It's baseball. It, it, and and pe- the same people that said that point the year before were like, Edwin Diaz isn't very good, but I think the Mets could make a run. So right. now he's great, and the other parts have That's changed. a good point. No. Listen, no, the, the Angels have the two best players in baseball, and they suck every year. Well, <laughs> you know, Robertson's the Mets, you know, now pseudo close or whatever, and he was with the Phillies. It's just the Mets lost a huge weapon, and it's a of course. huge blow. And and would I sit here and tell you, I'm, you know, it doesn't make a difference? Of course it does. The Mets are going to lose games that they wouldn't have this season because of that. <laughs> but it doesn't mean they're not the Pirates. Right. They're not. They're the stacked. Right. They still, they're not stacked, but they're very good. Nemo injury might have hurt more than Diaz in a weird way. Yes. And, you know, they're, they're going to be okay. Uh, they're going to be okay. And they got some talent. <laughs> they're going to be fine. And they're going to make a trade. Everybody's going to try to get Otani in the middle of the year, even though he'll probably just go to free agency. And then it's going to be, they're going to be throwing billions of dollars at him. And it's funny that they're, they're like, we should trade for uh, um, Diaz's brother. <laughs> it's like, we just chill. We don't need to get his bloodline in here like we're in wrestling or something. You know what I mean? We'll be okay. Like, just just chill out. Let's give it a minute to the middle of the year. There's always like a closer that comes on some random team, and, like bad team in the middle of the year that has like 30 saves out of nowhere. You're like, who the fuck is this guy? Let's get him. <laughs> you know, no, they don't need him. Just shown as a track yeah. record of showing he won't be afraid to make that trade. Yeah. He won't it's be true. afraid to get somebody that you need in that spot. He does what it takes to win. It He's doing no, I don't know. It's like, Will that person be Edwin Diaz? Of course not. No. But they'll have they'll upgrade their bullpen when it's when it's time to do it. Yeah, yeah, it would. You know, it sucks. It sucks because it was fun and it was it was great and and like I said, it was like Mariano Rivera. He's not as good as him, obviously, but it was like that where it's like you got to the eighth inning with the lead. Hitters in the eighth inning were pressing because like fuck, we can't get to the ass. And now you don't have that weapon, weapon, and that's big. You did, but at the end of the day, you can still win some games. That's all, you know. So updated NBA, updated NBA standings, Nets yes. 42 and 33, Heat 40 and 34, Nets 39 and 34. Uh, Net Heat game on Saturday obviously is very big for the Nets. And, you know, from my perspective, trying to get into the six seed um, is all I care about. And beating Miami is the ticket for that. For the Knicks, they are 42 and 33, a game and a half Ahead of Miami, what's so frustrating as a Nets fan? Oh my God, they're forty and thirty-three. You're tied with the Knicks on the loss column. Not that I think the Nets would catch the Knicks, but just so you know, every, weird. You have so many more games than every, the Knicks. Nets have so many more games than left than the Knicks. It's, it's weird. Back scheduled just differently, but yeah, man, every strange Nick fan would be like, "Oh my God, there they are." Um, so yeah, that whatever Nick game. Nicky game is gonna be big. You'll beat the Rockets if you lose the Rockets. There's, there's they reason. could. I mean, the Rockets, you know, they're not good, but like they could lose to them. No, you can't. Lose. <laughs> they could. They lost to the Hornets <laughs> three nah, weeks the ago. Rockets are, yeah, but the difference with the Hornets and the Rockets is. The Hornets uh, have some players that are veterans. That well, can play. the Hornets yeah. are. They got Rozier. They got Hayward. Yeah. 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 And they, like the Rockets are basically just, I don't know. Tanking. They're a tank. Nothing. And there's just no. Rebuilding. Yeah. No organization, they got some young talent. Yeah, but they is... don't. They don't take it. There's just there's a. They're playing pickup ball out there. Yeah, yeah. no, I get there's it. There's just a level of organization there that isn't. So you're gonna go into that heat game basically one and a half. You're gonna be tied. Um, not tied, but you're gonna go into that heat game. The heat game is the biggest game of the year. Like it was the other day. They should have they, won yeah. yesterday and whatever, whenever it was. But this is this is also the funny part to me about like Nick fans. Uh, last thing I'll say about it being like. Can we catch the Cavs? And I and I and I said, can we catch the Sixers? And I had said this from the jump. Those teams don't lose. So although the Knicks are playing well, all, you know, nobody wants to talk about the fact that the Cavs are 47 and 28 and eight and two in their last. Right. Test. Right. Right. Like they're still doing what the Knicks did for one week. Right. But right. that won't be talked about because it's not the Knicks. Right. No, they, well, Knicks fans need to justify the Donovan Mitchell stuff that they have to shit on him every chance they get because they need to justify that they didn't get him for some reason because they're stupid and they need to make it's that sunk cost fa- fallacy, Mike, where it's like if you Google that, it's like you've dug yourself in so deep 
that you can't imagine being wrong. So you keep doubling down and 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 changing it and changing it and changing it. instead of just having the wherewithal to be like, I was wrong. <laughs> That's it. Just say it with me. I was wrong. The Nets weren't going to win with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. You can say it. I was. Nah, wrong. I won't say, say it. it. I, I would. Wrong. I would like to take my chances with it. They probably wouldn't. <laughs> See, that's sunk cost fallacy right there. Well, that's it's you. over now, man. There's no sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> that thing has been dug, buried, and done. The thing is over. <laughs> but you would do it again. See, that's that's what that's well, what I mean, it is. I wish yeah. they never made the. Well, you know, I tweeted something the other day, but I. Oh, they won the trade, but I mean, think about what Kyrie Irving did. Like that, he. It's unpredictable. That was so unpredictable. That his, he his basically got so pissed off after being like the great teammate that he <laughs> said they wanted to be traded, and they did that, and the Nets were probably happy because at least they're losing. They're losing, but it's like normal. Tonight sucked, but normal. Yeah. And then Kevin Durant, who's a mercenary, said, get me out of here. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Kyrie's gone. I'm mad at But the funny thing is, I'm mad at Kyrie. Like, my mindset, if I was Kevin, and I'm not Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Be, I'm mad at Kyrie. Yeah. Let's show him what we got. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, no, I know. Let's play here. Let's show him that he fucked up and go with this roster. And whatever happens, happens. And, you know, if the Nets were the five, let's, let's say Kevin Durant was here, they'd probably be the five seed and lose to the Cavs or something. Or the six and lose to the Sixers. They'd be in that realm. But mm -hmm. at least have the balls to just be like, Kyrie left. Fuck him. We're Nets. We're gonna play here. Let's put mm -hmm. it together. But to be like, nah, man, I give me to Phoenix. Yeah, that's rough. That well, I won the mercenary debate, and so you can you, you can you can agree I with won't that. Say at least. that. Yeah. yeah, that one you did. Not James Harden. Score one for he me. Was not a mercenary. James Harden was just he was a Nets. James Harden got there. And he's like, whoa, fuck this. <laughs> Get me out of here. It's like, yo, this guy's nuts. <laughs> Kyrie. That's He's like, so Kyrie's crazy. Get Kyrie me out of here. Harden hugged it out after the game, and people were like, see, it was the Nets that were the problem. I'm like, come on. It's been well, a Well, it's year like and a Kyrie daps up all the Celtics players after the games. And meanwhile, during that season, they fucking hated Kyrie. And it was all types of reports out there that they hated him. But well, oh, they one, shook it was, hands. Well, the, break, the, the Harden one in particular, I, the, I, I think it's a pretty much a lock that Kyrie pissed him off. Of course, he, of course he demanded a trade. Be cordial with the guy, you know. Yeah. Come on, was he going to punch him in the face after the game? Right. <laughs> Great game <laughs> from two years ago. I I owed you that one. Right, he doesn't <laughs> care. He's over it. Harden's got his yeah. own agenda. Yeah. All right, well, it's been bad weather fans. Episode one hundred and sixty-three. Knicks lose. Nets lose in epic fashion. A hard, just a dagger and a half. I always start these going like after a net loss like that, Alex. I always say, "Damn it, I have to do bad weather fans tonight. I don't want to talk." But then after doing it, I always do seem to feel a little bit better. Therapeutic. Than before I started. Yeah. It's therapy. You know? It's better Sports than you therapy. Know, going on Twitter and being like, got this guy. Ugh. Oh, got this guy. Oh, got you on this one. Oh, oh my God. Guy. I need to take a break from Twitter. I've been I too much. Late. This week, it was too much. I was on too much this week. Too was... much. Yeah. Delete it. You know, it's sick. And this is how I know I have um, a Twitter problem. I deleted the app from my phone. And I would open my phone and I would, I would find my thumb. The spot where Twitter scroll is. Scroll <laughs> that it was there. And then I would go, it's not there. But this wasn't even like a thought like, oh, let me check. It's just such a natural instinct for me to when I open my check. phone to go check. to it. Yeah. And then I said, that's that's not that's not good. No, it's a habit. It's not good. It's like a it's like a uh, like a binky, like a pacifier for a baby. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm bored. Twitter, I'm bored. That's Twitter, crazy. I'm in the elevator. Not Twitter, uh, it's just, yeah, no, it, I need to take a break. But we're gonna promote the podcast, and you <laughs> on know, Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter. But uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I need to, I need to take a little step back. Knicks are off for a couple of days, and you know, we'll that we'll, Saturday. Knicks, when the next next game Monday? I don't know. I, it's on there Monday. I have no idea. But uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers stuff. Maybe they'll <laughs> suck me back in. But you know, we'll see what happens. Is it's just next uh, Monday. That better get done before the draft. That's all I'll say about the Aaron Rodgers stuff. But next Monday, Monday Heat, Nets Saturday versus Heat. Uh, next Monday versus Rockets, Nets Saturday versus Heat, then Sunday versus Magic, Knicks Rockets Wednesday, on Monday, the then Knicks, Wednesday, Wednesday Heat. Cavs, and then it's, you know big game against the uh, in Cleveland that Friday after. So when is the Knicks Heat game? That Knicks Wednesday. Heat or Wednesday? Okay, and then Knicks right. Cavs on Friday. All right, sounds good.
Okay. Oh, well, you got it here. Your personal Google. That's that us. Fans, episode 163, Mike and Alex. Alex, I'll talk to you later. Have a nice night. Thank you.